Well, hi folks, Matt Kaliskowski here, and uh, as is pretty typical for every couple of months, we have a, uh, a new kind of dot update for Lightroom Classic CC. Um, just a couple of quick little things that were, that were added into this version, but I figured I'd do a, a fast video here to show you what's new. Uh, okay, first off, I'll go to my favorite one, and I think the one that you'll like the most is in the develop module. If you go to any of your panels and you just right click um, on the name or next to the name, you're going to see a little uh, option that's new that pops up here called Customize Develop Panel. And what that'll let you do is reorder the, uh, the order of your panel. So I can just kind of drag and drop and put things where I want. I always use effects for vignettes, so I'd put that up. Um, you know, transform lens corrections are not on, on my commonly used setting. Split toning is definitely not on the commonly used one, so I can move those down. Uh, you click on save and it's just gonna usually, and I already did this, but usually it's gonna pop open a dialogue that just says you need to relaunch Lightroom for those changes to effect. I have not relaunched Lightroom, which is why you see them in their default order. I gotta give this one a try because I've, I've been using Lightroom since it came out. I'm kind of used to the order, even though I don't like some things here, but uh, I'll give it a try. You know, I, I've been using it so long, I'm afraid I'm going to start scrolling to the places where I thought things were, but uh, it's definitely worth, a, definitely worth a try now that we can customize it. And for those of you that didn't know, uh, you could uh, go over here. There were ways also, and this is, this is not new, but you can turn the little checkbox off. If you know, I just don't want to see split toning at all. Just turn the checkbox off and your split toning panel goes away. I just don't typically do it because I always do videos on Lightroom training videos and it's weird when people see things that aren't are there or not there or whatnot. Okay, next up, uh, a couple of preset things. There's a there's a, a feature just when it comes to creating presets that when you add a preset and if you if it's a duplicate name, it'll give you a couple options to uh, to kind of rectify that at the time where you're you're adding the preset. Another one here if you notice in the presets panel, you see this one called silhouetted landscape number 17. Um, so look how it's italicized. Something in that preset is not meant for a JPEG photo because right now I'm looking at a JPEG photo. You can see the name of it down here in my, uh, my little right above the film strip there. So something in that preset won't work for a JPEG photo. It could possibly be something to do with the profiles, um, your profiles and your, you know, some of them only work on raw files. So the preset's really not going to operate correctly if you apply it to a JPEG. What they've done is, is now that's italicized. Um, if I switch to a raw file, you're going to see that one goes away. See, now it, it's not italicized anymore. So it's there that it italicization, however you say that word, is there to let you know that, hey, something in this preset is not necessarily meant for this type of photo, so it might not look right. There is an option in your preferences. If you go under the edit menu on a PC and Lightroom menu on a Mac, under presets, uh, you're going to see a little checkbox there, show partially compatible presets, which is turned on, which is why we're seeing that preset. If you turn it off, that preset will not be shown, which again, is kind of weird. I think when, when you know you have a preset there and then you don't see it. So I just leave it turned on and just kind of remember when it's italicized that it just generally means that the, the preset might not work right on that particular photo. All right. Uh, real quick, before we get to the next one, a quick word from our sponsor, which is me. Um, if you, uh, if you like these videos, folks, all I'd ask is one quick thing. And that is a, uh, a follow, uh, best thing you can do is, uh, is if you're on, uh, if you're on YouTube, um, you can subscribe to the channel, of course. And then if you don't want to, you kind of want a notification whenever I post a new video, you can, there's a little bell that you can ring. Uh, same thing goes on Facebook. So if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, there's a way to go and like my page. And then there's also a way to turn on notifications. So I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, uh, next up here, if you uh, have ever used or may, you might not even know it's there, there's an auto import feature inside of Lightroom. It's been there for a while that uh, you can have basically set up a watched folder and do auto imports for you. Well, a new feature in Lightroom 8.1 is the ability to do that auto import and also add it into a collection. And then from there, we'll uh, head over to the book module for the last little feature here. And that is um, under the guides option. It used to be that you could only snap to cells, which was kind of limiting depending on the book layouts that you were doing. Now you can also snap to a grid inside of the book module. The last thing I'll leave you with is there, there's always going to, they always say bug fixes and performance improvements. I already got an email from somebody saying a bug that they had was fixed. Um, I can tell you, 
I didn't have a Lightroom performance problem and not everybody does, but I understand that some people do. I'm gonna point you to a video that talks about ways that we can speed up Lightroom. Sometimes it is Lightroom's fault, but also sometimes it's it's expectations and things that we're doing. So that video will really give you a couple of tips that, that should help you speed up Lightroom and a, a couple of things that people didn't know. What I can tell you is that what I did notice is uh, when I did the update, because I watched for it, I, I, I knew the update was coming. So before I updated, I kind of checked switching from library to develop, and then I checked it after the update and switching from library to develop for, for me was actually quick. It's actually even faster now. Um, and then inside of develop, when I'm hitting the right arrow key and going to the next photo, I have found that to be faster. So that's just my, my personal um, you know, experience with it. I don't even want to hear comments on this because I know it opens up a whole can of worms on that. But uh, again, make sure you go watch that video because I think it could also uh, help speed things up for you. Folks, thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again real soon.